Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. Here is Pastor Arnold. Good day to you. God bless you. Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Hey, welcome to this family Bible study hour. Praise God, our Father's Word, how precious it is. What a fantastic chapter this chapter 3 of 2 Peter is, telling us of the three world ages and the three earth ages. Now, inasmuch as one has to do with heaven and the other earth, the first earth age and the first heaven age naturally were at the same time. And thus, this second uh, heaven and the second earth age, which we're in right now, they both at the same time. And we have one more age to go, and that's the eternity. That's going to be forever. How precious it is. Wonder where we'll all be at that time. Do you know? I do. I know where I'm going to be. I love my father a great deal. And I know, though I'm not perfect, that on repentance, He forgives me my shortcomings. He will do the same for you. It's a very sobering thought, dear one, when you think in this generation how close we are to that day. How, how about your thoughts? How are they? Hmm? Think about it. Doesn't hurt. Do you love your father enough to serve him? Then become a capable, able, able servant by learning what his plan is. And probably there's not another better chapter that will inform you as to what his overall plan is in these three earth ages. Now, real briefly, the first earth age we found was that Satan's rebellion, God destroyed the world that then was. And that as a matter of fact, in Genesis 1-1, then in verse 2, we found that the earth was not created void and waste, but that it became there after the overthrow. Thus, as it is written in Ephesians 1, 4 and Romans chapter 8, some were chosen before the foundation or uh, even can be translated before the overthrow, the overthrow of Satan, why they earned the right. Now, we come to that time when we're going to find out how this particular earth age and heaven age will be changed. Let's ask a word of wisdom from our Father. And beloved, just let His word flow. Don't wrestle with it. If you've never heard it before, know it's from your Father. And listen to His love for His children. Many times it is passed off in this particular verse that we're going to start with, that our Father is almost like Satan. He's going to throw a bunch of people in the fire and sit there and laugh while they burn. Well, we've just, in the, in the closing verse, we found out quite the contrary, that our Father is long-suffering and that He, it is His desire or will that all on their own free will come to repentance and love Him. But he won't force them to do that. Okay, now we pick it up then concerning the second earth age and what shall destroy it. Or better yet, I like the word bring it to a close. The earth shall not be destroyed, but the evil that is upon it shall be. Chapter 3, verse 10, 2 Peter, and it reads, But the day of the Lord will come, as a thief in the night. Now, why would, it, why would he use that idiom, that figure of speech? Because no one knows where a thief, when a thief is coming, or they would sit up and run the rascal off, see? In other words, a thief always comes when you're not expecting him. In the which the heavens, that's the second, shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, both the heaven and the earth, the earth also, and the works, I repeat, the works that are therein shall be burned up. The word elements is tochon, stachon in the Greek, and it really means rudiments. 
it's, it's a difficult word to translate and catch the full thought from it, but let's take it even to its prime. It means that that is organized and marches together as an example. In other words, everything that plays it. It means that that is organized and marches together as an example. In other words, everything that plays it's the same tune and marches to the same drummer. And of course, these rudiments are Satan being the drummer. All those things that follow Satan will be destroyed. We know that Satan himself at, on the first day of the millennium or the last day of this earth age, whichever before the millennium, the millennium happens to fall in this age, incidentally. It is that great lake of fire at the end of um, the 20th chapter of Revelation that actually ends the age. The millennium itself, that thousand year reign of Christ and his uh, priest, children, those that follow him, those that love him, is considered a part of the second earth age. So be sure that you keep in mind the, they're part of what we're going to look into here will happen on the Lord's day and the rest will happen on God's day when God himself returns and the lake of fire is there and the great white throne judgment and that ends it. Uh, I, ho I hope that does not confuse you. Only Christ returns at the beginning of the millennium. That is to say, that office. The Godhead de facto does not. God still remains in heaven as it is written in the 15th chapter of Revelations, and heaven is sealed. There's no comings and goings from heaven during the millennium. In other words, those that are still spiritually dead when the millennium begins must remain that way. The, the dead must remain dead, spiritually dead. Uh, learn the difference between the Greek uh, nikos and nikos, okay? Uh, spiritually dead for that thousand years because they've got to be tested when Satan is released a short season. Then comes the great white throne judgment and the second death, which is to say in the lake of fire. That ultimately changes man. Man will change before the earth does, but at that time even the earth itself will be renewed, and that word new means freshness. In other words, it will be rejuvenated. Same old earth, but a new earth age. Now, this is written of in a different place. You know, you can go to the 14th chapter of Zechariah in the Minor Prophets, and there is a verse there that really frightens many people, but I want you to understand that you never have to fear your father. The 14th chapter of Zechariah pretty well sums up the end. It's, it's another place. Yes, it's in the Old Testament, nevertheless, uh, it pretty well sums it up. I want to read to you a very frightening verse to most people, those that without understanding, but it shouldn't be for you if you'll listen for a moment. Chapter 14, verse 12 of the great book of Zechariah. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against uh, Jerusalem, the city of peace. Remember, Christ will be there at that time. That great city mentioned in Revelation 20. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Zip, just like that. And their eyes shall com consume away in their holes. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. What is he talking about? All right, let's go back to the New Testament. Paul puts it in a much different way. I want to go to 1 Corinthians, if we may, chapter 15. And we're going to take a couple of verses there. It, as you're turning there, we're going to pick it up with the 51st verse, but I, remember what the 50th verse says. When, as long as you're walking in your flesh body, what does that mean? Verse 50 of 1 Corinthians 15. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot, repeat, cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit cor incorruption. In other words, there is no way you can enter the kingdom of God in the flesh body. 
Therefore, the consuming away and the fire and the destruction of the rudiments are the elements. It does not mean elements such as, as atoms, at atoms, like the, um, okay, you got it, particles. Now verse 51, listen carefully. Behold, I show you a mystery. Do you want to understand the mystery? Paul writing here, Paul spoke in great mysteries. Very difficult for some to understand, but not to you that have eyes to see and ears to hear. We shall not all sleep. We're not all going to die. Specifically addressing the final generation, those that are still walking the earth in their flesh bodies, but we shall all be changed. So what our Father is doing here is actually changing you from the flesh body into the spiritual body. All right? That's, that's something everyone should say praise God for. All right? 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, that quick, all at the last trump. What is the last trump? It's the furthest one out in the Greek. And that's the seventh naturally. There's only seven trumps discussed other than warning trumps as an example from the book of Joel. For the trumpet shall sound, going to, not maybe, it shall. The seventh will finally arrive, and that means the last grain of sand in the hourglass slides through. And the dead, this is to say the spiritual dead, shall be raised incorruptible, and uh, that is to say, um, incorruptible and we shall be changed. The, those that are spiritually dead shall be raised into an incorruptible body, but they may still have a mortal soul. Understand the definition of mortal in the Greek and that will clarify for you. It means liable to die. They'll have an incorruptible body whereby they will maintain that thousand years. Everybody's changed, in other words, to the new body but the soul is changed to that that it has earned in our Father's eye, or in the eye of Christ. So, what we see here is that when we speak of that fire, and as I, in the last lecture, I covered that last verse in the 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews, our Father is a consuming fire. What what probably gets you into 99.9% .9 of the troubles that you get into in this earth age? Do you want me to answer it for you? It's your flesh. Our flesh is always wanting something that probably we would be a lot better off if we didn't have, all right? In, in looking at it from the spiritual sense. So naturally, when we put off these flesh bodies, and when we, when the spiritual, I like to look at it in this way. The spiritual body simply steps outside of the flesh body. Uh, you might even, if, if you are able, think in the sense of dimensions just a little bit. And it steps out, and you're through with the flesh body, never to use it again. It's gone. This, just as those that passed away thousands of years ago, they're through with it. It's not coming back. They already have that promise of God, which is to say that spiritual body. Will fire burn it? No. No. Not in that dimension. It will not. Does it feel that pain? No, it does not. But the, the overcoming then automatically, using common sense, goes to the perfection of the soul, not the body. The body's already incorruptible. I don't care who you are. But the soul must, rather than being mortal, become immortal. Which is to say to move from, I will say it in English, fully translated rather than transliterated. In other words, the soul must move from the position or condition of liable to die into the position of deathlessness or life for an eternity. And, um, and there we have it. Anethesis or, uh, uh, or um, uh, euthanasia. 
Our Father loves His children. Your position at that time is what you have chosen on your own free will. Not your father's, not someone else. And do not put yourself on some guilt trip whereby saying I'm not perfect because you're never going to be perfect in the flesh. When you repent, he forgives you. As we covered in the ninth verse, he is long suffering toward us or to usward. And it is his will that we all come to repentance. The question is, have you? Think about it. There is no pain connected with the destruction of the elements by fire, our, which is to say our Father, His Shekinah glory, His word at the end of this earth age, but only pleasure, especially for those that have through free will passed their love on to Him and have willingly repented and have said, Father, I love you. I want to follow you, certainly not the, re the one of rebellion, which is to say Satan. So understand, many, many, unfortunately, many pastors have for many generations, without having the knowledge of the Greek or the Hebrew, as we found in the Old Testament, have taught this as hell, far, and damnation. And they try to hold the children of God by fear. You're going to hell and burn like a piece of bacon forever and ever and ever. That's what a loving God we have right there in the side of the throne, in the pit, burn, baby, burn. All right. Well, I resent that, but I understand because of ignorance, they didn't know any better because they, as I state, they did not have a working knowledge of the Greek or the Hebrew, and therefore they could not understand that it was not a negative event, but a very positive event. We have a God of love and understanding. He loves his children. And that is a very wonderful day to look forward to. When is, may we say, the rudiments, the change of flesh takes place on the last day of this earth age or the first day of the millennium, whichever you wish to call it. It's one and the same. The lake of fire takes place on the last day when, as it is written by Christ in the great book of Matthew, fear not he that can destroy your flesh body, but rather fear he who can cause your soul to perish. And that word perish, apalia, Palimi, rather, in the Greek, means exactly that, to destroy fully. Check it out yourself in the Greek. Learn to study your Father's Word, whereby you have a clear understanding. And then, as it is written, the earth shall be refreshed. We move into this new cleansing. And there will not be one tear, not one pain, therefore, this lets us know when every lake is covered that the lake of fire also is covered. A wonderful time to look forward to. Now, so we have touched upon there the change bodily, spiritually, and the earth physically into that third heavenly and earthly age. Verse 11 of chapter 3 of uh, Third Peter, let's get back to it and follow through. Verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversations and godliness? In other words, what should you be mentally prepared for? There's a wonderful change coming. We, we get so attached to the flesh, and that's well, that's called the instinct of survival, and it should be there. For it is, a, the, the, God did a good job in forming and creating our flesh bodies because they work very well for what they were intended. Though they are sickly, they age, they get old, and so forth. But to live and walk in that new body in the presence of God and be an overcomer, 
is a wonderful thing. So what should you be? You should be, as he stated himself in verse 9, that he is long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. God loves all of his children. So let your conversation be the word as it was stated, that causes all these things to come to pass. This word, it will never change. That's what your conversation should be about. Not, not what some good brother did, though it's, it's, it's good to talk about good brothers perhaps, but when you set yourself up in a position of worshiping and studying God's word, let it be God's word, not man's. For it is man's word passes away. God's word is forever. Make sure that your charge is that God's Word will be taught, not yours. That's what your conversation should be, the importance of God's Word and being mentally prepared, looking forward longingly, lovingly to that great change when we will again walk with Him personally. Verse 12, looking for and hastening, un hastening unto the coming of the day of God. That's the last day of the millennium. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements, that's those rudiments again, shall melt with fervent heat. That is to say when the lake of fire is stoked and everything that offends is done away with, destroyed. We're not going to have to put up with it anymore. So look at it in the sense that you are set apart. There was a great example that Almighty God uh, performed to remove any anxiety or fear, dear Christian, that you might have concerning this event. And it was done and accomplished by another minor prophet other than Zechariah, Daniel. Daniel, in that great book, the three Hebrew children that were with him, Hebrew being those that crossed the river, Eber, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were loyal servants of the living God. Are you? Hmm? Do you know what it brought them to be a loyal servant of God? When the king of Babylon, who incidentally in the book of Revelation will be on hand through some of these proceedings, he will, he will show those the way into the lake of fire, incidentally, being a type, if you would, for Satan, I speak. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego talk about a fervent heat. The furnace was heated seven times hotter than necessary. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were forced into that fiery furnace. For what reason? Because they refused to worship anything as a god other than God himself. That was the reason. They were forced into that furnace and they, there was not one hair on their head singed. Nor were their clothes uh, um, perfumed with the smell of smoke. God totally protected them while they were in the furnace and not only that, as Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, would say, how many men did you throw in there? And they said, three. And he said, I see four, and one is the Son of God, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, walking in that furnace with them. So don't fear, my friend. God protects those he loves. God does not hurt those he loves. And in that final episode, God himself is that consuming fire. And for you who have willingly come to repentance, it is a warming of the heart that brings you pure, true happiness and peace of mind. It's yours. All yours. If you choose it. I don't care. It does not cost you money. It does not cost you um, years necessarily of education, though education never hurt anyone, but it is simply the will to understand the simplicity in which our Father's plan of moving from the first, the second, and the third ages 
and carrying his children along with him. It's up to you. And it's very real. All these events that have come, transpired in the first earth age and this can be documented very easily and we do it every month when we go out in the field to do documentaries of the first earth age, the world that was, and those things that have transpired in this earth age, the migrations of the children as this book, the Word of God, states they migrate. We have found those ancient Hebrew writings in many places and have documented it and brought it to you for the purpose. Many people have been brought to God through those documentaries to say, it's real. It happened the way he stated it did then you can rest assured, beloved, and you can feel safe and secure in Him that your Father being that consuming fire. In, in Psalms 104 and 103, the closing verses in 103, God speaks of His ministers of fire. All right? We're kind of, if you wanted, a, a fire family in that sense, that we are the light. He is the light, and we are the lampstand, if you want to say that, the holder of that light, the bearer of that light. If he is in you, naturally that light comes forth. So we are a fire people or a, a people of the light, not darkness. All right? So don't let the word light and fire frighten you when it has to do with you shedding this old flesh body and putting on that new body in God's own time and place. I know there are people that are, that have mental problems and when someone describes the changing from this body to the next as a pleasure, I must emphasize in God's time and place, not yours, to destroy one of God's flesh bodies before he is through for it ere he parts the silver cord is murdering one of God's children and that makes him very angry and is a severe sin. I must say that for people that are sick, all right? Enough said. But we come to that time, we come to that time when you must understand His Word and the pleasantness, though it has been utilized by the hellfire and damnation folks for a long, long time, it is a great time of love. Verse 13, let's continue and complete this great book of 2 Peter. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, whose promise? God's promise. Look for new heavens. Check it out, friend. Check that word out in the Greek. It's freshness, revitalized, rejuvenated. New heavens and a new, fresh that is to say, not a different earth, but this one freshened, a fresh earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Why can we say dwelleth righteousness? Because there is no unrighteousness in the new earth uh, uh, freshness. Verse 14, wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, that's your mental condition. You should be looking forward to such things. Be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. In other words, in what way? In the flesh we do a sin. He's talking about here in the blameless sense of this, as this subject opened in chapter 2. It's don't worship the false husband. Don't worship the fallen angels when they're cast back out on the earth again. Don't worship their leader who is none other than the son of perdition, which is on, there is only one person at this time that fits the role of son of perdition. That means the son that's to perish, and that's the devil. All right? don't, don't ever let anyone kid you about who the Antichrist is. It is the devil himself playing the role of Jesus. Because only he and no other soul living or has, that has ever lived has already been condemned and judged other than him. Uh, footnote Ezekiel 28. Don't worship them. You're, uh, we're, so don't get on some guilt trip because you um, um, 
didn't bathe last week or something of that nature, that you're going to hell, all right? It's not talking about personal things necessarily and your own little personal sins, though you should refrain. It's talking about worshiping those things and being untrue to your father in faithfulness and catching yourself being the Jezebel that whores after Satan. That's what he's, think that's what he's talking about. Be at peace, that's the way you are at peace. You have peace of mind from his truth. Verse 15, an account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. In other words, go back to that ninth verse, read it again, understand his slackness and long-suffering is because of salvation. It is the true plan of salvation. It is God's plan of salvation to bring salvation to his children those even that rebel to give them that privilege of finding him through repentance at the cross or be, through the cross. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. There are certain uh, cliques that say Paul should not be recognized. Here you have Peter himself giving Paul a set of the highest credentials that any man could ever bear. He that Christ said would found the church recognizes the wisdom of Paul and beloved you read part of that mystery in as much as Paul says I show you a mystery. I'm quoting again from 1 Corinthians 15:51. Uh, that we shall not all sleep or die, but in the wink of an eye we'll all be changed into an incor uncorruptible, incorruptible body. And then had we continued on, he'll say, and this mortal must put on immortality. You know why? You're going to do exactly what the mortal word means, liable to die. You're going to die if you do not put on immortality. Paul speaking in depth about those wonderful things, but in a simplicity that any child can understand. 16. Also, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things. What things? The three world ages and the plan of salvation. In which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned an unstable rest. They wrestle with them as they do also the other scriptures, the other rest of God's word, unto their own destruction. Beloved, study your father's word and then you won't be unlearned. In the simplicity in which Paul and his epistles write, you will find great direction, great understanding. In the simplicity of God's plan of salvation, worked out through the three earth ages, bringing his children. It is amazing how people rest or wrestle with the word of God in as much as every event. Many people say, I don't want to read that Old Testament. Well, don't be stupid. Paul, this intelligent one, would write earlier in the 10th chapter of that great 1 Corinthians, in the 10th verse, he would say, all these things in the Old Testament happened as an example of what would happen to you in the end generation at the end of this world. So it's silly not to understand the Old Testament for it's like our father putting on a play, if you would, of how, what happened to um, David, how he killed, slew the giant. There's going to be some giant slayers in this end generation when those fallen angels come back to earth again, spiritually speaking. God's calling out a people that care and wish to understand his word rather than the words of man. Verse 17. I might, I might just add before we start reading 17, don't try to understand man's word. He doesn't understand himself. They never make sense. But God's word, understanding it, will allow you both to understand God's word and men and their actions. Verse 17, ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before beware. In other words, remember he started by saying, I want to call these things to your remembrance. You knew them before. I've called them to your remembrance. Beware 
That's mean warning, lest ye also, being led away with the era of the wicked. Who are the wicked? Those that follow those false angels, the false messiah, fall from your own steadfastness. In other words, studying God's word, if you don't stick with it, and you look to other new religions. Be careful, friend. 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge, I repeat, grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever and forever and ever and ever, meaning into that third fresh earth age. Are you going to be there? It's going to be a wonderful place. Not one tear. Not one thief. Not a liar. You see, as I stated before, 99.9% .9 of our problems are caused by the flesh. We're going to beautifully step from it into that wonderful, spiritual, incorruptible body, a body that doesn't get sick, a body that doesn't get old, it doesn't wrinkle or shrivel. A spiritual body that God creates in perfection. But the same self that you are goes into that body. And when Christ approves you, if you have been loyal and loving, your soul immediately goes into the immortal role. Otherwise, you'll be taught through that millennium because the traditions of men have frightened many and have not allowed them to see the smiling, wonderful face of our Father God, Yahweh. That loving face. With the arms outstretched, they have sewn kerchiefs, that's pillowcases, as it is written in in Ezekiel chapter 13, and placed over his saving arms as he reaches out and says, children, come to me. Don't listen to these that teach my children to fly to save their souls. It's not going to happen that way. I'm quoting from Ezekiel 13, verse 18, starting there. Now he wants, it is his will that all come to salvation. This is his plan. From the time that Satan rebelled in the first earth age and that katabel, as it is written in the Greek, took place, his election chosen at that time to bring forth his word, even in this generation and other generations, known as the remnant that would pass through, bringing forth his word to his children, all loved by him. Then we come to that new heaven what a wonderful place it's going to be as we go to that tree of life uh, once each month and we partake. And we partake of that tree and it inoculates and immunes one from boredom, from hunger, from want, and fills one with total, complete peace of mind and happiness. Don't miss it. It's really your home. Sure is. It's really your home. Don't let someone steal your key to the door, all right? Don't let it happen. How do you prevent that? By the knowledge from your Father's Word, not man's Word. All right. Bless your heart. I hope you enjoyed that book of Peter and um, that uh, you have grown in it as much as I enjoyed teaching it. All right. Bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please? Free and...